Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and on this episode, I thought I would do one last monologue. I've done them occasionally throughout the series, and uh, I was just inspired recently to do one final one. What actually inspired that? Well, there is a game that I played uh, again. I went back and I revisited it uh, called Spiritfarer. Now, when I did my best of 2020 list for video games, there was over 30 games on that list. Usually when I do those, too, I've done a few of them, you find that the... It's really like the top few are the ones that really stick with you long term. And uh, that was definitely the case in 2019. There were like five that really stuck with me. 2020 a little bit lighter just because a lot of them didn't really speak to me. But the the top two, uh, Wasteland 3, which was my top, and then number two, Spirit Fair, feel like the kinds of games that are definitely resonant for a long time to come. Why was Spirit Fair so interesting? Well, the reason why Spirit Fair was so interesting was because it, it's just such an interesting concept for a game. What you do is you play this character Stella and her cat Daffodil, and at the very start of the game, you discover that they are dead. This is how the game starts. You start out finding that, that they, they are indeed dead, and they are talking to the ferryman, Sharon, who says that, well, well, Sharon's retiring and needs someone to take over the job of ferrying souls to the afterlife. Yeah, this is kind of heady right out of the gate. Well, Stella is the new spirit fairer. And the rest of the game is finding these spirits throughout this world, building out your fairy, and uh, helping those spirits move on into the afterlife, essentially. Taking them to the Everdor and letting them essentially ascend. That, that is the entirety of the story. And if you think that that's going to be uh, an emotional roller coaster to go on, you are correct. It absolutely is. I do highly recommend it, but I always say that if you're going to play Spirit Fair, be in a... Make sure you're emotionally prepared. Because it is not going to, there's going to be a, a many, many times during that game where you are going to, uh, it, it, it's going to be hard. It's definitely going to be hard. Uh, it, it very emotionally resonant. But, you know, I, I could talk a lot about that game. I, I've done a Citanium Mine on it. I will try to link to it. But basically, yeah, no, the, the graphics are gorgeous and, and the music is haunting and the, and the characters are really beautiful. But the reason why I went back and played it recently was because there was what they called the Lily Update. And I didn't really know what that was. But it turns out what the Lily Update is, is there's this new character that you meet. Uh, it's supposed to come in later in the game as many of the, you know, spirits have ascended. And uh, it is a, a humanoid figure that is made of butterflies, and you find out that this is essentially Stella's sister, Lily, who is not dead, but has, um, is, is going through a bunch of family photos, looking at, at Stella's life while she is drinking heavily, kind of remembering her sister who has now passed. And so... It takes you on a few little quest lines that explain and kind of expand upon Stella's life before she ended up here. Something that, as well as uh, several of the characters that you have met, and a little bit about the backstory, because Stella kind of knew all of these characters that she is helping ferry on to the afterlife. She knew all of them. And so it gives you more context with that, which, it, unless you were reading the wiki before this, uh, you would not have known about any of that, really, in, in the game. It was not spelled out. So they did that to add a little bit more backstory to how you got here. 
And I think that it was a really nice addition, actually, because beforehand there were only just a few times in the entire game where they would just show you these flashes, these images of Stella's life, and they had no explanation to it. So in this one, Lily, looking back on all of these photographs, is explaining the story to you a little bit better in, in more detail about how Stella lived, the people that she met, and eventually what happened when she got sick and died. What happens after that is basically the same thing that would have happened in the storyline, and I'm not going to give too much away. You might be able to infer some things about how this game goes, but basically what I'll say is, is the rest of the game, beyond that, basically plays out the same way. But what I found interesting is that when you get to the actual end, which is a very sad, difficult ending but also kind of, you know, fills you with something almost hopeful, uh, is still there. It's still there. But by giving the extra context that that little update has, what you end up with is something that even has more emotional depth than what was there before. What that started getting me thinking about was what happens when your character dies and what they actually leave behind. On the last episode, we were talking about what happens at the end of a campaign, and one of the things that often happens is that your character dies. That is not an unheard of thing. But what we didn't really talk about is what your character leaves behind. Your character might be gone, but you remember that character. Very much like Lily, looking back on those photos of Stella and remembering the life that she had, your characters sort of live with you. And it doesn't necessarily mean that even after they're gone, you can't expand that storyline even further. And that other characters in your world, other characters in your party, can't expand upon who they were when they were alive, or what resonates afterward. Now, in many ways, that gets seeded from your control your character is gone, or at least your character's control. But that doesn't mean that it can't still resonate in some way. But that is, in many ways, for other people to determine. does not mean, however, that you can't internalize some of what your character has gone through up to that point. And it's important to think about that, too, because assuming that your character eventually comes to an end, and knowing that they come to the end, what stories will be told about them? And the actions and the things that you do do guide the storyline in one way or another, even in ways that you might not realize, even after your character is gone. And if we take a page out of Spiritfarer's book, which basically casts you as a main character that starts off dead and interacts with other characters that have also passed on, what we really see is not an expansion of their story, but really a reflection of their story. Everything that kind of happens in Spirit Fair is based around the idea of kind of fleshing out who these characters were and allowing them to be okay with what happened to them on Earth and their role in the world that they used to be part of. And once they find a way to, to be at peace with that, they're able to actually move on and essentially ascend. Now, I have to say that even after all these years of doing the show, I still really have not played all that many uh, tabletop role-playing games, and I certainly haven't played in many campaigns. But what I did notice is that the longer that you play in a campaign, the character that you are portraying becomes a lot closer to you the longer it goes on. They become more fleshed out. They become more real in certain ways. You start to identify with them more. And so if you've played a character for many years, seeing that they are gone can be a really devastating experience. Because of course it's going to be. It's a character you were playing. But one of the things that you can remember about world building and the collective experience of actually having a tabletop group building out a storyline, the art of role playing, is that just because that character is gone does not mean that the character is 
actually gone from the world. They existed inside of it. What they did mattered. It had an actual impact. It had a role to fill. What they did still resonates onward. In fact, the world that basically forgets about that character altogether and just like removes them from the story there onward is not actually a very realistic thing because all people that came before us had impacts that resonate onward today. It's actually incredibly realistic to have campaigns where characters, even after they are gone, no matter how they are gone, had some impact on the other characters, on the game world, and on the storyline moving forward, and the direction that ends up being taken. Going back to Spiritfarer for a minute, you can see how Stella's impact on all of these characters influenced their lives when they were alive. One of the uh, things that they kind of explain... In the Lily update, I knew it because of the wiki, because I wanted to look into the, the backstories here, is many of the characters that Stella meets were characters that she met working in end-of-life care. That's really what she did when she was alive. She was a healthcare worker. And so she would see a lot of these elderly people or just sick people who were at the end of their lives, and that's kind of when she meets them. And in a lot of ways, by going through these storylines where they explain more about who they are, she learns about them, even though they're now in a different plane of existence. Although the character development that those spirits are going through in Spiritfarer doesn't really resonate to the world that they left, you know, past this point, it does resonate to the characters in the game. And I think that that's a really interesting idea, that for them, their storylines haven't truly ended. It might for everybody that was left back on Earth, but for them, their story still has an addendum moving forward. So do your characters. After they have died heroically in battle, or maybe they slipped on a banana peel, I'm not sure what happened to them. But the point is, is that they're removed from the equation of the campaign itself. Do they have a postscripta? Do they have something that happens past that? Or are there things that we still don't know about them that we may never know about them? And more interestingly, can those things that we didn't necessarily know about them even be integrated back for the characters that are still alive. Not necessarily in a, ooh, the ghost of my character comes back to explain, but in records that are uncovered, or journals of the characters. The things that they had left behind that maybe even the party themselves were not aware of. Player characters, very much like people, never necessarily have their entire story explored by others. But sometimes you uncover things about them. When you go back, very much like Lily went back, to look at those photos, to look at those records, and reflect on them more deeply than you did before. Your character, no matter how long you play them, and no matter how long you inhabit them, are probably never going to be completely known even to you, let alone to other players or the people running the game, and even to that game world itself. But that doesn't mean that there isn't more to those characters, and in some ways, unlocking that or uncovering little tidbits about that is a joy into itself, something that really does flesh out the world because it's fleshed out your characters. I like to think that even though I probably won't play Rembrandt again, for instance, even if he never gets out of his technical or hell dimension that he seemed to be trapped in, there's definitely threads that were put into place that are probably going to be explored by other characters that we haven't even met before. Like, chances are someone's going to be coming to look for those swords. They, they won't be able to find them because, again, technical or hell dimension, but... Those, those threads have been started. Dr. McFly will likely one day perish in a really silly way, probably by slipping on a banana peel and falling down an ancient set of, like, ziggurat steps, which seems pretty in line with his character. But the point is, is that 
his inventions, what he built, what he uncovered, what he discovered, the adventures that he went on, the journal that he built, the writings that he put down to paper, and eventually the things that he put out into the world and built for others, that maintains, that continues on, and influences the world past that. Your character is always going to have that kind of impact on the world, even if you don't necessarily realize it at the time that you are playing. Playing a game like Spirit Fair is very interesting because you get to reflect on that more deeply. That, yeah, these characters are gone from the landscape. But by uncovering things about them and their storyline, we learn that maybe they had a bigger impact than even they understood while they were alive, while they were on that plane of existence. And I find that really interesting from a storytelling perspective. Your character may be gone, and you know, your character may even get forgotten, but the world itself remembers. It may not be even known to the other characters in your game, or the GM running, or other observers of that world, for that matter, but inherently, the things that you did while you were in that world have impact moving forward. You can't escape it. It will, sometimes in a very small and seemingly insignificant way, have a real impact on what happens after your character is no longer technically part of the story. That is your character's legacy. It is not something that you can simply remove from the conversation afterward. It gets hard-baked into the storyline. Just simply by your character having been there for no matter how long impacts the story. And before I conclude this episode, I want to go back to Sparefarer one more time to kind of explain how that works in that game. Because when you first meet Stella, she is a blank slate to you. You know nothing about Stella. And she is completely silent for the entire game. She doesn't really say anything. You don't find out anything about her life from her own words, from her own narrative. So everything that you learn about Stella is being told to you by other characters in the game. And in a lot of ways, by seeing the reflection of those characters and the impact that she had on their lives, you learn everything you need to about her. Her story is being told entirely through other people's perspectives. And you see how her impact on them resonates even after they are gone. The addition of Lily as a character shows that Stella's story still has resonance on Earth, in the physical plane, even though she is not there directly. Her sister still remembers and explains the storyline more directly of who her sister was. Lily now makes the narrative, but the narrative is based on what Stella actually did. It is her story directly being told by others. So when we finally do get to a conclusion to Stella's story, it adds a lot of weight because now she understands that there is more. So when we get to a conclusion to Stella's story now with that additional information, she is now armed with the knowledge that her story did have direct impact on people that are still among the living. So now when we come to the conclusion of Stella's story, which is still the same basic ending she was going to have, she is now armed with a knowledge she didn't have before, that her life still resonates in the world that she left. And that makes all the difference. It was a powerful story to begin with, but seeing that one little addition to flesh out what her sister now sees, who is now making the narrative, who now remembers the story, creates a whole new level of understanding of why we care about Stella, why we care about her story, 
and who she is and was and continues to be, even though she's gone. Oh, well, we got a little deep on this episode, and that's okay. That's okay. Because if we were going to do it at all, it might as well be at the very end. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I hope that what we've done here on Delve over these last few years still resonates onward, and in many ways informs what we do next. I never know exactly how much impact the show has had, or really anything that I do personally, but in a lot of ways, reflecting on moments like this make me realize that in some small way, maybe we did have an impact. It at least impacted some individuals, and that's something worth considering. We have had so many wonderful people that we have met, that we have learned from, that we continue to learn from now. We've had so many people that came out to support the show, so many people who interacted with us, people we would have never met otherwise because of this show, and opportunities that have presented themselves to us over those years. That's all still going to matter into the future, even though Delve is not here. That is all still going to be important for us moving forward. That is an impact that the show continues to have, and we would not be where we are without it. And we certainly would not be here without all of you who happen to be listening to this. And hopefully you have been able to take something away from the show, and hopefully you have been able to be inspired in some way. We certainly hope so. But even if you have just kind of listened to it in passing, and maybe you picked up a thing or two along the way, that's okay too. And it doesn't even matter if you don't really remember that you heard something on this show or that you picked something up from listening to one particular episode. That doesn't matter. The impact that it actually had on you, that's the whole point. It's at this point that I would normally tell you about all of the calls to action and the places where you could find information about Delve. You probably already know about that if you've listened to the show at all, and we're going to have, obviously, a whole slew of new places for you to go and stuff for you to do when Total Pebble Knockdown releases. I'm not going to do that now. Instead, I'm going to have a very different kind of call to action to take a moment and think about the impact that your characters, or perhaps even you, have had on the world that you didn't bother to think about. You know, our lives get so busy and wrapped up in what we are currently doing or what we need to do in the next week or month or year that we often don't get a chance to take that moment to think about where we've been. But if I'm going to do a call to action on this episode, I'd like to do it not for the show and not for community building, but for the community itself. Take that moment. Do it for me, but also just do it for you. Thank you for listening. We will see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.